Hi you guys and welcome back to my channel. It is Gabby. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. I hope you guys can see me okay. I have like my ring light on and I also have the windows open to get as much lighting in here as I possibly can. I decided to record this video on a whim just because I do want to answer some questions for people who may need to know about formulating or just want to know how to get started with formulating for themselves in general. So I think this would be a really cool video and I also want to say you guys that we are approaching 20k so that is super exciting. I do have a giveaway plan once we hit 20k so definitely tell everybody that you know to subscribe I think it's gonna be a pretty good giveaway um, I'm trying to think of everything that I want to give away because I really want to pick like five people at least um, definitely somebody's gonna be winning some money you already know that's about to happen so definitely want to give away some money but I'm also trying to give away some other cool things so definitely stay tuned for that as soon as we reach 20k I will be recording <sighs> well I take that back I'm going to record what I'm going to give away because I have to finalize everything. So I'll put that video up to let you guys know what's going to be given away. And then once we hit 20K, I will announce the winners. So stay tuned for that video. Anyway, you guys, so um, if y'all see me looking down at my phone, that's because I literally just wrote or jotted down everything I wanted to say in this video. So excuse me if this is not pre-planned, you know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah. So let me just go ahead and figure out what I wrote first. All right, you guys, so I wrote down a few key things that you guys will need to know when formulating or before you beginning to formulate or just whenever you're ready to formulate in general. So, so the first tip or piece of advice that you're gonna need is to figure out what you wanna formulate. Figure out what it is that you're looking for, figure out what it is that you know that you want and what do you wanna add to either yourself, to your line, to your business, for your kids, whatever you wanna do, just figure that out. Y'all always know that I say take a piece of paper and jot down all of your ideas. You know I'm really big on taking notes, jotting down ideas. I have so many notebooks laying around so I suggest you guys do the same because it really does help when you are writing out your visions and your goals and putting them down on paper. And as you're writing, say what you're writing. Repeat it and constantly repeat it and constantly believe it and constantly have faith in it because it definitely will come true. So definitely figure out what you want to formulate. Secondly, look at some comparable products to what it is that you're trying to formulate. See how you like those products or if there are already products on the market that you do like that you think that you would like to add your own touch to or your own spin on. Definitely look at those products, observe them, observe how they react in your hair, observe the qualities that they have, the benefits that they have, and then also write that down as well so that you can apply that to what it is that you're trying to formulate. I would not recommend trying to reverse engineer someone's product. I would definitely just say if you find a product that you absolutely love, make sure that you put your own spin onto the product. Don't try to copy it ingredient for ingredient. Don't try to copy it label wise. Don't do that. Just make sure that if there's a product that you like and you're like, oh, this conditioner works so well. It absorbs great into my hair. It feel, makes my hair feel so soft. It makes it smooth, frizz free. Don't try to copy or anything like that. Just try to pull from those benefits and put that into your own product in your own way. Remember, your own stuff is gonna be anybody else's stuff being copied. Trust me on that. Let me say that again. Your own stuff is going to be anybody else's stuff that is copied. So I wholeheartedly believe that if you're going to do it yourself, you're going to do it right. And when you do it yourself, it's going to be bomb because it's something that you really wanted. It's not what someone else wanted that you just copied from. So definitely always make your own stuff. Next, you're going to draft up your needs for the product. What's your vision for the product? What are the benefits? Who's going to use it? Who needs this product? What do you need this product to do? What do you want this product to do? How do you want this product to fill in the hair? Do you want it to be a rinse off product? Do you want it to be a leave on product? Do you want it to strengthen the hair? Do you want it to soften the hair? Do you want it to give the hair frizz free? Do you want it to give the hair shine? Do you want it to have endless moisture? Do you want it to just Ooh, to somebody you know just make sure that you write down all of these key factors that you want for this product because it really makes a major difference and it also is very very pertinent and important to what ingredients you decide to put into the product and of course next you're going to want to research all of the ingredients that you need for this again all of those key benefits that you wrote down there is an ingredient to match every single last one of them so if you said you want the hair to be frizz free then you need to look at ingredients that are going to give the hair a frizz free definition and things like that for an example that for an example <laughs> for an example um, there is a conditioner it's a liquid cationic conditioner called cetrimonium chloride that is meant to give detangling property properties for its free properties things like that so maybe that's something that you may want to put into your product um, let's say you want the hair to have super 
defined a super defined look and you want this to be like a styling product look into some polymers that may give the uh, hair that styling fixative hair agent that you want it to have let's say you are looking for the hair to not be greasy let's say you're trying to make like a twist cream and you don't want it to be really super greasy and weighed down then at that point you want to look into some lightweight emollients that replace silicones because let's say you want it to be silicone free so in that case you want to look at those emollients that are lightweight um, that will give that nice silky smooth shine to the hair that nice silky feel but you don't want it to be greasy so these type of emollients also degrease products so let's say you're using you know three butters five oils then I would say you want to use a pretty nice amount of an emollient a lightweight emollient that way it can kind of take some of that down look at esters as well um, let's say you wanted the hair to be strengthened um, in that case, you want to look for some strengthening agents. So maybe you want to get a few extracts. Bamboo extract is a really good one that is high in silica, so it helps to strengthen as well. Uh, let's say you were looking to add some proteins. Keratin protein is a really good um, and strengthening agent to add into the product. Let's say you wanted to just get a little fancy on them. Look at some different oils. Look at maybe some of the exotic type oils. What do they do? What off or what benefits would they offer to your product? Um, a lot of times you guys you may you may see ingredients lists that just are super duper long and they have all of this stuff in there you're like what the freak why they got all this stuff in here now i don't need all that in my hair don't do your product like that then if you don't like that then don't do that do what you feel is going to be best for your hair and your consumer definitely look at what's going to be best for your consumer first and then look at what you're going to like because again if you're starting a business or you're starting a hair care line you're not really going to be gearing it towards yourself only you're going to be gearing it towards your consumer base so figure out who they are and what they want and then make up your ingredients list based off of them next you're going to want to figure out what percentages are you going to need to use for each ingredient so i always tell people this um a lot of people always ask well how do i know how much to use it's not based off of what you want to use per se it's more so based off of what's going to work for your product so you have to figure out what it is that you want for your product this comes with all type of different factors let's say you're making a conditioner what viscosity do you want this product to have do you want it to be super thick do you want it to be thicker than curvy gabby sorry no, i'm just kidding y'all but like what type of viscosity do you want it to have how well do you want it to flow through the hair do you want it to have slip? Do you want it to penetrate really well but not sit on top of the hair and absorb? All of those things matter into what percentages of each ingredient you use. Um, let's say you are trying to go for like, like a repairing or strengthening type of treatment mask. In that case, then you may want to use a little bit higher protein than you would in a regular leave-in. Um, so let's say you have a consumer base that is very very finicky with protein that just are not really liking protein in their products in that case you probably don't want to add too much protein because you already know your consumer base they don't like it so why do something that they're not going to want to gear towards and they're not going to want to buy so make sure again all of this ties back into what's going to be good for your consumer base glycerin let's say your consumer base are the type 4 hair that just really do not like glycerin especially in the summertime do not use a heck of a lot amount of glycerin because that's not what they want and they're not going to purchase your product again if they notice hey this product is really crazy on my hair and i see glycerin is like the second ingredient in the product so definitely just try to compare your your ingredients and your percentages to what they're going to want to use um let's say you wanted this product to be tear free for babies and you're making a shampoo then you want to look for the mild surfactants you don't want to look for a surfactant that's going to be super um potent or you don't want to look for a surfactant that's going to be that primary one that's going to be super stripping and super cleansing um and then you may not you don't want to use a sulfate you don't want to use any parabens all of these things may matter when it comes to your consumer base but it also matters when it comes to making a great product so just make sure that you're taking your time with researching all of these ingredients researching what percentages are going to work best and then also just testing it out that's really the only way to learn and the only way to know is just by testing it out so then you're going to want to draft up your first formula and draft this formula up based on your needs for the product but your consumer needs first and then on the percentages that you're going to need to put in there so your first formula especially if you're new to the whole formulating thing your first formula may be sucky for real for real you may have to go through like three to seven formulas before you get that final perfect one that is okay do not stress about it do not sweat it it's okay um let's say you made your first shampoo and you made your formula and you super excited you're like ah! let's go let's get it and then tomorrow you see your shampoo separate you like wait a minute now i, I spent days on this now i, I spent time on this 
figure out what it is that you did wrong figure out what it is that you did not include or that you did not put enough of in just make sure that you look at your formula and analyze it and figure out what is wrong you can always 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 figure out what's wrong with your formula if you pay attention to it pay attention to how it's reacting is it changing color is it separating is it thin one moment and then thick the next or is it thick the next one moment and then thin the next all of these things matter ph matters all of these things are going to be pertinent to when you're making your first formula that way when you make your mistakes your first formula you know how to fix those mistakes going into your second formula the most important thing through all of this is make sure that you are making a stable product so use the percentages that will make the product stable kept keep the product emulsified keep the product at its current viscosity um so things like that is going to matter if you're making a conditioner that you want it to be super thick and you made it and you whipped it up really good and it's looking beautiful and then you add your fragrance and your preservative and now it's like super watery and you're like what the freak know how to fix that know how to fix it research on how to fix it research on how to play around with your formulas to do that now let's say it was super thick you mixed it up really good you added your uh fragrance your optifin plus and everything in there and it's really good and you're mixing it and it's thick and everything and then all of a sudden the next day it's like super watery super liquidy you're not sure what's going on did you check the ph did you measure the ph did you add any ph stabilizers in there there's a lot of things that go into making sure that formulas are stable so just you know research on these things make sure that you're understanding what these ingredients are sometimes you may see something called disodium edta in a product or sometimes you may see tetrasodium or sometimes you may see all of these different ingredients that you're like what the freak is that research it and figure out why they put that in there because nine times out of ten it's a certain reason why it's in there um there's a lot of ph buffers there's a lot of stabilizers there's a lot of emulsifiers there's a lot of solubilizers let's say you're making a product that um, doesn't really require any oils in it and you make the product and you're like cool I'm excited it's an anhydrous or let's say it's a aqueous type product and you're putting in all of your ingredients and then you put your fragrance in there and you notice your fragrance starts to sink to the top what the freak is going on here at that point you're going to need a solubilizer because you're going to need that fragrance to stay within that product and not sink to the top so just make sure that you're researching all of these ingredients and knowing what they mean what they do what they're for constantly 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 test your formula test your product the only way to know if it's the bomb.com is to continuously continuously test it even now i've i've made hundreds and Y'all probably made over a thousand formulas for people throughout the throughout 2020. So I've done a lot of formulas and everything. And even now I still test like crazy. Like I even with the private label products that I'm about to launch, which is really soon. I'm super excited. But you guys, even with those, I test, 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 test. <laughs> if I could show y'all all the formulas that I had went through, it's just it's it's a lot of time, you know, it's a lot of work it's a lot of a lot of diligence it's a lot of effort and you just have to be willing to roll with it and just don't get discouraged don't give up don't you know just don't <laughs> cry it out if you got to but still make your product because if you're really really true to yourself about this and you really want to get this done you really want to do this you got to be patient you got to test you got to roll with the punches you just got to do it you know because that's what you gotta do my last piece of advice is to always make sure that you're checking the ph always make sure that you're using the correct type of water always make sure that you're preserving anything that contain water i get tons of emails you guys from you guys asking oh i'm making this product do i have to put water or do i have to preserve it oh i'm making this product do i need to put a preservative yes if the product contains any trace amount of water yes you need to put a preservative in there um so yeah hopefully that answer like 2000 emails over the last month that i did not respond to i'm not responding to them like just to be an a-hole y'all i just really be busy and everything so i hope that's answering y'all questions anybody that emailed me that asked do they need a preservative of water yes you do um so yeah that's that and then also always go by formula and not recipe get recipe out your mind don't even say recipe anymore when it comes to creating cosmetics always just say formula and the reason why is because when you're making a recipe you're like oh I'm gonna throw a teaspoon of this in there a half a tablespoon of that when you're going by a formula I'm throwing 50% of this 3% of this 6% of this that way if you're making a recipe and you made eight ounces and you threw a half a teaspoon of this and a teaspoon of that how do you know how much you're going to need to use when you're making eight or three thousand ounces 
you know it's a little you can convert it but it's just a little more work to convert whether or versus you doing 3,000 ounces by percentages 50% of this 50% of that 3% of that is gonna go like this you can just type that into a calculator and be done with it so always make sure that you're going by percentages also sometimes when you're doing a recipe and you're just doing it by teaspoon tablespoon gram pinch you're not gonna really get it as accurate as you could so when you make your bigger batches it may not come out the same exact way you may be like what the freak did i do different so versus doing percentages if you're doing constantly that 50 percent three percent six percent fifty percent three percent six percent every single time no matter if you're making three grams 200 grams 3,000 grams a hundred thousand grams it's still gonna come out the exact same way every single time why because you're using the exact same percentage of each ingredient every single time I know a lot of my clients get confused on that when I send them a formula and they see all these percentages and they like what the freak do I do how do I do this so let me break this down really quick let's say I sent you a formula and your formula has all of your ingredients and then it has all of these percentages you're gonna always want to convert those percentages so I send you your blank formulas for your shampoo and you don't know how many grams. You're gonna find a calculator and you're gonna say, hey, what's 30% of 250 grams? It's gonna tell you how many grams you need. Write that down in that line. What is 2% of this many grams? However many it tells you, write that down on that one. That way you know, if I make it 240 grams and I've converted all my percentages, this is how many grams of each ingredient I need in order to make my 240 gram product. So let me say that again a little slower. Every time you have percentages on a formula, you want to convert those percentages. If you're making, let's try a different scenario this time. Let's say you're making 500 grams. Let's say I sent you a shampoo and I sent you your formula, your percentages, and you say, okay, I wanna make 500 grams of my shampoo. Let's say your water is at 35%. Then you're gonna need to type in 35% in the calculator, but make sure that the grams is 500 grams because you're doing 30% of 500 grams. So it's gonna tell you how much you need, so you're gonna write that down next to water, because that's how many grams of water you're gonna to need to get 30%. Let's say your surfactant uh, polyglucose is at 10%. You're gonna to need to know what 10% of that 500 grams is, so you're gonna type that into your calculator. It's gonna tell you, write that down next to polyglucose. Let's say you decide to put, mm, give me an oil. <laughs> Sweet almond oil. Let's say you decide to put sweet almond oil in your shampoo and I put it in your formula at 2%. You're gonna wanna type in 2% of that 500 grams. That's gonna convert it for you. You're gonna write that down next to the sweet almond oil. So every ingredient that you ever get and every percentage, when you convert those percentages to that amount of gram or ounce, is gonna tell you how much of each ingredient you need to make that total 500 gram, 124 ounces, whatever you decide to make. So I really hope that that makes sense, you guys. I wish I could have like showed it to you guys so it could make more sense. Let me know if y'all confused about that in the comments so I can like give you a bit a better scenario visually. Um, so yeah, just always make sure that you're doing it by percentages and not by recipes because it's gonna be easier to duplicate every single time with percentages than it will be to do it by the recipe, by the gram, by the teaspoon. I'm sorry, by the teaspoon, by the pinch. By you know, don't do it that way. Um, so yeah, hopefully this video was informative for you guys, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Y'all got a little rant video coming up soon. I don't know if y'all gonna see that before or after this video. It's, um, about warehouse spaces, y'all. I just went to see, like, two today. I've been seeing warehouses all for the last past, what, two weeks now, and I'm just not interested in them. Like, it's, it's not what I'm looking for, you know? So... Y'all pray for me because I'm trying to find a bigger space. Y'all don't want to hear me talking about that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Y'all follow me on my new Instagram account. It's um, underscore girl named CEO because I'm trying to get my followers up, y'all. I'm trying to create content. But anyway, you guys, I love y'all and I'll see y'all in the next video. Don't forget to get us to 20K so I can do the giveaway because I'm ready to give some money to y'all.